Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to The Cube, here in Las Vegas, this is SiliconANGLE TV's premier broadcast, go out to all the big industry events, help extract the signal from the noise. We're of course here at IBM Itch, talking about things like storage, power, Z-series, middleware, lots of different technology really sit at the basis for a lot of companies around the world. Really happy to have a couple of practitioners uh, here with us to, uh, on this segment. It's Coriol Life Sciences, we've got Scott McGill, who's the CEO, and Stephen Cradle, who's the Director of Product Development. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here on theCUBE. Thanks for having us, good to be here. All right, so, so Scott, obviously, you know, Coriol, life sciences, you know, uh, explains what, that you're in the life sciences business. Can you just give us kind of a quick thumbnail, uh, the, the company, how long you've been around and sure. what, what parts yep. of the business you're in. Um, so we're a healthcare company that uh, utilizes patient DNA to help physicians understand what drugs will be efficacious for the patient, which ones might cause them harm. So we are a fairly recently formed spin out from a 62 year old nonprofit that's been operating in the Philadelphia region um, in the areas of personalized medicine and biobanking and a whole host of other research projects. Um, about three years ago we spun out Coriel Life Sciences as a commercial endeavor um, focused on taking a lot of the intellectual property that had been uh, created through a research project that had been running for about 10 years at the Institute. Um, and we figured out how to take genetic information and really meaningfully use that now in the clinic so that doctors understand you know, which drugs are going to work and which ones aren't, which is an amazingly difficult problem. Great. So, Stephen, can you give us a quick sketch of you know, the IT organization inside Coriol Life? So absolutely, so uh, one of the great things about uh, being part of a, a startup like uh, Coriol Life Sciences is the opportunity to build things cloud first sc from scratch. Um, I'm happy to say we have zero on-premises uh, data center. Uh, we have a lot of focus on uh, software. We're uh, taking a close look at uh, Bluemix for uh, platform as a service. And um, really from step one, we have, uh, we have an environment that can scale up and down uh, as we need it to. Um, with uh, fully integrated backup and resiliency. All right, so yeah, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been part of the storage industry and watched it for many years, and you know, what, one of the kind of high level bullet points that gets bandied about is, you know, we're trying to take data and turn it into information to make it actionable. I mean, your business is all about data. I mean, you yeah. can talk about genomics, talk about that, um, but you know, that being said, how has you know, technology been transforming your company over maybe the last few years? Yeah, well I think we're, we're just now getting to the point where all of the data that's out there as it, as it relates to uh, risk information for medications and medication regimens can now finally be brought together in a way that's meaningful to doctors and, and is more holistic than I think it's ever been before. Um, certainly the genetic information is huge. I mean there's a, an awful lot of data that's produced when we do a genome screening for an individual. But that's really only a piece of the puzzle because your genetics don't tell the full story. Um, when you take a medication, it's, uh, it's likely you're taking more than one. Uh, by 65, the average person's taking eight medications, and it goes up to 17 by the time you're 85. So what's really important is to start to bring in all the information from all of these other sources, not just the genetics, but how these drugs interact with each other, how they interact with the particular patient demographics. You know, if you're over 65, some drugs are contraindicated. If you are uh, taking drugs that uh, cause dizziness or cognitive burden together, that can cause slip and fall accidents at a high rate. So all sorts of variables have to be taken into account and pulled together in a way that's actually meaningful and easy to use for physicians. It's a massive big data challenge beyond just the genetics, and that's really where we've focused our attention is to try to rationalize that process for physicians. Yeah, so maybe you can unpack a little bit for us. There's, I mean, huge amounts of data. We know that you know doctors would have to spend you know more hours in the day to try right. to keep up on what's going on there. How does the technology and the people you know work together, and how does your company help there? Yeah, so on on the genetic side, we have a, a process whereby we we curate medical literature to understand gene drug associations. So take for example. Um, Plavix, which is the second best-selling drug in the world. So Plavix 
on a population basis, it doesn't work for about a third of the people that take that drug. It's, they're either non-responders non to the drug or they're ultra-rapid metabolizers, and so they flush it out of their system before it can actually activate and take effect for them. But without understanding the, uh, that genetic component for that individual, doctors just prescribe it as usual, and a third of the people get no benefit from it. So what we've done is to curate all the medical literature as it relates to Plavix and the genes that are responsible for the metabolizing of that drug, and we've created algorithms that can take raw genetic information from a patient and turn that into actionable physician advice. So we do a, a simple buckle swab test of the patient. It's a Q-tip rubbing on the inside of the cheek. That gets sent off to a lab. They return back to us the raw genetic information. And we use this technology infrastructure and all these algorithms that we've built up to turn that into an actionable report for the physician. And that's really something that would have been, as you say, impossible for a physician to do on their own. Yeah, so, so Stephen, you know, I, I know just as an observer out there, <laughs> I've heard how much technology is changing so fast. Um, you know, the, the, the cost to just sequence a genome, you know, how long that took and how much we had to do is, you know, just dramatically changed over the last few years. Went from, you know, only the mega rich or, you know, certain corner cases to, you know, we're talking, you know, real soon we should be able to, you know, sequence everyone. Can you, you know, how do you look at that from a product standpoint, from a technology standpoint? You know, how does that impact what you're doing at work? Absolutely, so what, what we need to maintain is flexibility as the uh, as the scope and uh, and depth of the source data evolves. Uh, we need to be able to uh, react very quickly. Um, you know, perhaps one day we can tell you what your risk of thrombosis is. Uh, the next day we can add on to that and give you three or four other answers that are derived from that as we supplement with additional patient data. So from the technology standpoint, we need to be extremely modular to say we don't know exactly what the shape of the the input data will look like. Uh, even drives us towards sort of a, a document-oriented uh, document, uh, view of, uh, of the data. Um, but uh, in effect, we need to be light on our feet, uh, modular, and uh, that's, that's what we've Driven to build. Yeah, uh, I mean, flexibility has to be key F from, from uh, a, an organization overall. I mean, how do you manage this change? How do you plan for it? I, I think you know, you know, drug development is typically measured in years. Sure. You know, uh, you know, IT projects are, are shrinking as to how fast they can change things. How, how does the company keep up and keep ahead? Yeah, well, I think uh, the good news is we've got uh, you know Steve at the helm here, who's been able to build an infrastructure that has allowed us to be incredibly agile with changing in, in uh, really any number of different facets of touch points that, that really inform our business. So it's not only changes in how we can sequence individuals, so as you say, the cost of a genome sequence has plummeted to the point where uh, it's now almost daily practice. Um, the first genome cost about $3 billion to do, now you can do a whole genome in it for about $1,000. So, and we don't even need a whole genome, right? So we do targeted uh, genotyping and sequencing of just the areas of high variability for drug response for tens of dollars. So that's cha rapidly changing, and there's no standardization in that industry yet, so we've kind of had to create this, uh, almost an SOA architecture that allows us to take in these variable in ingestion points and also um, when we produce our product, our, our advisory information for physicians, be able to deliver that in variable ways. Right? We have everything from fax machines to direct EHR integration, electronic health record integration, and everything in between. So for us, uh, you know, what Steve has done is, uh, I mean, frankly, it's a work of art from a technology perspective. It, it has really allowed us to um, stay on top of all of this change that's occurring and be able to take in new information as it's produced. New drugs may take years and years to get to the market, but there are thousands and thousands of drugs out there that we still don't understand the genetic correlation with. So that's, you know, new information in that area is produced on a weekly basis. And so we have to stay on top of all of that information so that we're always producing the best of available knowledge for our physicians. All right, so, you know, IBM's obviously a, a partner of yours mm -hmm. in helping with these technologies. Are, are you talking with IBM or working with them at all on the Watson Initiative and how that's impacting things? Yeah, we, so we've, uh, we, we've kind of danced near the Watson Initiative uh, on a number of occasions. Um, where we are with Watson right now, because uh, so much of what we do is algorithmically based, um, Watson's not fantastically suited for doing the the day-to-day -day processing of genetic information. That's more um, it's by, by rote. You know, it's things that we've written good good algorithms uh, based on science that can align genetics to physician advice. 
Where we do see a huge impact for Watson in the future for us, and we've been uh, talking with the Watson team for uh, a number of months now on this, is to help us to do that initial unstructured data medical publication curation. So when a new paper hits the uh, you know, Nature magazine and shows that there's an association between a particular gene and an outcome for a particular drug, um, none of that information is uh, c easily consumable by a, a machine. Um, except a machine that can do natural language interpretation and uncommon connect check connections like Watson can. So we're, we're thrilled with this uh, idea that uh, in our future is likely a Watson implementation to speed along this essentially product development cycle for us on the gene drug associations. Yeah, I, I'm curious how the knowledge that you gain through what you're doing, you know, how much of that is what you do internally versus what can be shared kind of industry wide. If you talk about things like drug interactions, uh, I would think that there's you know tribal knowledge that could be shared. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're we because our legacy is really from the research medical research area. Um, we're firm believers that uh, you know we all get better when knowledge is shared. Right, all boats rise with the tide. So for us, you know, we participate, we're one of the founding members of uh, the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, which is really focused on sharing genomic information for the purposes of research and discovery and all that. Because quite frankly, there, there's not enough money in the world to do um, clinical trials on every potential gene drug association. What we really need to do is uh, really data-driven discovery work that can only happen when we have very large data sets. And that only happens with collaboration. All right, so, you know, we've only got a couple of minutes left. You know, how, how is, how's the technology helping you? And, you know, what, I guess, what's the, kind of the white space, if you kind of had a wish list and said, you know, talk to the executives here at IBM or at the other big companies, you know, what, what would you look for to help you do your job better? Well, on a, on a purely technical side, um, I, mean, I think we're seeing all the evolution headed in the right direction. Uh, containerization is something that we're very interested in. Um, some of the talks this morning talked about uh, I.O. and parallelism, and, and that's really a big big driver of our, our architecture. Um, we're not uh, so much bound up and reliant on increasing clock speeds of, uh, of the micro architecture. We're, uh, oriented, we're uh, oriented towards doing a lot of work in parallel, uh, seeking out a lot of uh, common combinational um, alternatives for a drug regimen, for example. It's almost like the traveling salesman problem where you have almost an unbounded number of alternatives. So, that's, so, that's our focus. So, for, so for you technology. hit a hot button on mine, containerization there. So are you guys using microservices today? Are you using container technology? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're definitely headed in that direction. Um, we have a pilot, uh, pilot microservices uh, architecture um, with uh, RESTful APIs. Last question I have is, you know, what, what brings you to, to, a, to a show like Edge? I think you've been to some other uh, IBM shows, first time at Edge. What, what's your thoughts so far? You know, what advice would you give to your peers uh, as to why it's advantageous to come to a show like this? To come to shows like Edge? I, you know, it's a, when you get this kind of mind share together and you focus on one particular area of technology, um, it's amazing just how much variety there is out there in the field while at the same time having commonalities between the different industries. So we can talk about our application of these technologies in healthcare, but it's extraordinarily similar to what other people are doing in the banking industry or elsewhere. So there's a, you know, a nice birds of a feather feel for um, you know, having the conversations over cocktail hours and certainly in, in the sessions that uh, I think start to energize people around these, these various technologies. So it's been great. All right, uh, you know, Stephen, I want to give you the last word. If, if, if you had any recommendations for your peers as to, you know, what you've gone through here, any, any you, know, you know, things you look back and say, oh, I wish I'd known that when I started with some of these technologies or, you know, road bumps that they should look out for. Hmm. Um, I, I guess, um, I guess I, as a general piece of advice, I would, uh, I would recommend it to really focus on, on containerization, on repeatability, uh, no special snowflake servers. Um, and if your environment blows up, you should be able to rebuild it quickly. And uh, that's that's been a been a big focus and uh, and an excellent um, learning experience as well. All right. Well, well, guys, you know, huge changes in your industry and throughout the whole IT industry. So Scott and Stephen, really appreciate you coming to share your your study with uh, you know, with our community here. And uh, please stay with us. Uh, we're going to have a bunch more interviews here, day two here at IBM Edge. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, and we'll be right back after this quick break. <laughs>